tuned in to watch this with Eric and Brandon. I'm Eric. I'm Brandon. And this is the show where we make a friend watch a movie or TV show they've never seen before. What do they think? Is their opinion the same as ours? That is what we find out. And on today's episode, we're going to be discussing St. Elmo's Fire. I've seen this movie a bunch of times. Brandon just saw it for the first time the other day. We'll get Brandon's first time reaction in just a moment. My reaction as a somebody who's seen it many, many times, favorite scenes, things like that. Also, this falls into a very specific category of movies to me. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. And spoiler alert, we're going to be talking about the movie, so if you've not seen this, then uh, we suggest that you go and watch it, and then come back and uh, see our reaction. Right, and that's one thing I did uh, want to bring up. We won't necessarily be going over the entire plot, yeah, but we we're also... spoil everything. Right, but we're also just not going to watch ourselves. So just keep that in mind. Go watch the movie, and then come back here and uh, watch this video. So let's talk about a bit of the background of St. Elmo's Fire. 1985, this came out. It's a coming-of-age film directed by Joel Schumacher, uh, starring the Brat Pack, all the uh, Emilio Estevez, Rob yeah. Lowe, Andrew McCarthy, Demi Moore, Judd Nelson. The list goes on and on. Yeah, it's pretty much standard for, for Brat Pack movies. I mean, it's got just about everybody. If Molly Ringwald was in it, it'd be even... You know, it would know, just be, it would be better, the icing on the right? cake. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And it focuses on a group of recent graduates in Washington, D.C. and had some financial success. For just a $10 million budget, they made $37 million at the box office. So, so they made a profit. Made not a little huge. bit of money. Yeah, not big. And uh, according to uh, Joel Schumacher, a lot of people actually turned down this script because, as it turns out, and you saw the movie, some of the characters not so likable. Yeah, they weren't very likable. <laughs> and so a lot of people didn't necessarily want to play these roles at yeah. the time. And the, the head of a major studio called the seven-member cast the most, quote, the most loathsome <laughs> humans he had ever read on page. <laughs> so you can just imagine how it's that went. It's understandable. And the producer found Emilio Estevez, actually, and Judd Nelson and Ali Sheedy through recommendations from John Hughes, who had worked with, Hughes, who'd worked with them in uh, The Breakfast Club. Right. And uh, yeah, a lot of those John Hughes movies, I mean, these guys, you know, they're in a lot of those movies. And so it's, uh, you know, they, they did great performances. It's just those characters. It would have been a tough sell, uh -huh. right, to get actors to play those characters. But you know what? It was the right time of their lives for these people, for the Brat Pack. So I think it all worked out in the end. And uh, a couple of little background things, a little uh, research tidbits here. Uh, Demi Moore, whose character in the movie is a drug addict. Uh, mm -hmm. She plays Jules. She's a drug addict. Apparently was having her own troubles off screen. In real life. Yeah. yeah. She actually had to go to rehab during shooting, which is interesting. She had to go to rehab and become sober to play a character who was a drug addict. Yeah, and you can imagine how that went. I, mean, I don't yeah. know if they had to stop shooting at some point. They did. They kicked like her that. off yeah. set once. Yeah. 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 So, okay, so let's get to the prediction. I wasn't too sure uh, what to think going into this. I knew it was <laughs> about post-college life, but uh, between a group of friends and maybe the story surrounds of a loss of a friend, maybe somebody died or something like that, but that's all I really thought going into it. So, uh, so let's see how we... Uh, okay, so what was your reaction you just saw it for the first time well okay i'm gonna start with this i'm on the fence about the whole movie i didn't hate it right but it wasn't the greatest movie i've ever seen i agree and that's one thing that's hard to explain i enjoyed parts of it yeah here and there the story was okay but at no point did i find myself saying oh this is really good right you know i didn't i i, I didn't there was no point that where i said this is one of the greatest movies ever. I know no. you like. I did like though how they, uh, even though they were all friends, they were clearly out on different paths right. in their life. Uh, even though they all graduated together, you had Alec and Leslie talking about marriage, living in a nice apartment. Uh, Kevin and Kirby living together in a rundown apartment. Right. Yeah. So Crap two everywhere. Totally different yeah. aspects there. Billy, who is the rock star <laughs> character. Yeah, yeah. Living the rock star life. He's drinking. He's partying. Doing drugs. He's got a wife and kid at home. Yeah. Just um, can't let go. Of no, the he can't thing. let go of that college atmosphere. And Emilio Estevez, his character. Yeah, he was a weird dude. I got some problems with. Kirby. Yeah, 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 there was the a part with Annie McDowell who plays Dale. He follow, He's infatuated with her yes. throughout college, to and he sees least. her when they go to the hospital, and uh, and he follows her to a house party, tracks her down on a ski trip. Um, we'll get to that a little bit later yeah. on. Uh, she's out there with another guy, and why is she okay with that? <laughs> yeah. She invites him into the house. It lets him yeah. come in and, 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 and like everything's okay. Like it's not weird that he showed up. It at is the, weird. It at is the weird. House and, and, and said, here I am. And all in all, I didn't love it. Yeah. But I didn't hate it. Right. I don't think I'd watch it again. You wouldn't watch no, it again. I don't think so. <laughs> See, I've seen it once. That was enough for me. Yeah, that's that's totally understandable. I completely get that. Um, 
Now, it is about post-college life, and yeah. you mentioned that. Do you think it's an accurate representation of the realities, you know, the realities of post-college life? I, I think they covered it in a way where it was somewhat believable. Yeah. Uh, everyone's struggling, trying to find themselves, trying to find jobs, uh, going on to new careers. And, you know, some people I went to college with even aren't doing what they're doing, uh, went right. to school for. And I was lucky enough to get a job out of college uh, the summer after I grad- graduated. That's not a lot of case for the case for a right. lot of people. I know you started here. That happened for you. You started yeah. work right out of college. I mean, pretty I was much too. Twenty two when I got my first job in radio. My yeah. first like kind of career. Yeah, job. Yeah, was the same with me. I was the same age yep. as you when I started. And we partied in college. We partied after college. I still right. party today. <laughs> yeah, it's toned down like an animal. Quite oh, a bit. No, it yeah, is toned yeah. down. Well, you know. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we have. We still have like, like to have a good time. Yeah, and I sure. think it was a pretty accurate portrayal. Uh, how a post-college life would be for some. One thing I noticed is leaving college in the mid-80s clearly is very different from leaving college in 2013 when I left college. I mean... It's a totally different attitude. I mean, they all are thinking about, you know, starting a family, getting married. I got to get my career. Got to start making more money, all this kind of stuff. That is totally not the vibe yeah, today anymore. Today, people start 10 different jobs. Right. You know, they yeah. change jobs every year. They go back to school. Yeah. Study something else. And uh, a lot of my friends did that, you know. Uh, even friends I went to school uh, with for broadcasting mm. Changed careers eventually, or didn't end yeah, up in I know broadcasting, a lot of like and, that too. and uh, that's something that today is just totally, totally different. Like these characters did not seem twenty-two to me. No, and I think it's just because of the era that they were. They in. seemed older, yes, right? They seemed yeah. a lot older, and I think it's because you almost had to grow up maybe quicker back then. I don't know if that's actually how it was. That's how it, they make it seem in this mm-hmm. movie, and uh, so it's very different. But that being said, there are some things that I think are realistic, like Alex's decision to start working for a Republican senator as opposed to a Democratic congressman, even though he's a Democrat, just because, you know, he's moving up. He's he going to make more money. And make more yeah, money. He's going to be more successful. And I saw a sort of parallel to this or the opposite of this in How I Met Your Mother. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever saw uh, that. I saw, yeah, parts. A couple yeah, episodes. Yeah. So Marshall, played by uh, Jason Siegel, is studying to become a lawyer and eventually gets a job for a big law firm and he's defending this big bank or something and he just hates it. Mm-hmm. So he decides, I'm not trying to make all this money i want to do something meaningful becomes an environmental lawyer makes less money but he enjoys the work more right yeah and so that's kind of the opposite of saint elmo's fire with alec and i don't know i think that's interesting and that is realistic choosing which path you're going to go down you know maybe you have in mind what you want to do for a living but which path are you going to take maybe you're going to continue the rock star life right keep partying and and not (laughs) do anything and you know there's options do you know a billy Oh, I know Billy. You know Billy. <laughs> oh yeah, there's some Billys. Yeah. You just couldn't drop the college oh, vibe sure. afterwards. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, and and I've probably lost touch with some of, some right. of those of those characters. And now in their mid thirties, they probably aren't the same way I anymore. I, I, well, I don't know because Who sometimes, I, yeah, I, yeah, I don't I don't talk to them uh, anymore. But uh, not to say that I didn't. Uh, Enjoy the time that we had because sure, yeah. uh, we were all friends in college, but people lose touch and stuff like that. So. Absolutely. So let's get your reaction. What did you think of the movie? Well, I've seen this movie a bunch of times, yeah, and I'm going to continue to watch this movie. And like you said, it's not a great movie. I mean, that's completely subjective. This is our opinion, of course, but yeah, it really isn't a good movie. There's a lot of problems with it, uh-huh. and there's uh, a, a lot of different things I would change, which I'll get to in just a minute. I'm trying to... R- figure out why do I enjoy this movie so much? That's why what do I, I asked you. That was it? the question. I said, am I going to realize after we watch it why you like this so much? <laughs> and you still didn't have an answer for me. So I think I have an answer. Okay. You know how when you're driving along and there's a car crash and you just can't take your eyes off <laughs> Sure. It? I think that's what it is. Okay. I think it's like a two-hour long car crash and it's just a two-hour long disaster and I just can't take my eyes off of it. And also, the characters are so smug. Yeah, and they're not likable. They're not likable and I just love watching them go through hard times. <laughs> Maybe that makes me sound like a psychopath. <laughs> it probably does. But I don't know. That's got to be the reason because why else would I... Like, I want to watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> I want to watch it tomorrow. And you've watched it already a, a bunch of times. A bunch of so. times. And uh, so I I think that must be the reason. Because, yeah, I do have a lot of problems with it. And, in fact, there's a lot of things I would change. Do you so want to hear you, my Yeah, changes? sure. Let's, let's hear what you change. So let's start with Kirby. Okay. Because you mentioned Kirby. It, yeah, just a weird dude. Yeah. He does not need to be in the movie. No. 
There's a group of seven friends. Why seven? Yeah. Take Kirby out. Yeah, he doesn't really have any He doesn't importance have to it. any meaningful scenes with any of the other six important characters. No. Right? Everybody else does. They all interact at some point or another. The only time Kirby interacts with one of the other six people is when he's talking to Kevin about having Dale's hospital schedule <laughs> like a weirdo. Yeah, creepy. And then when he's about to be on his 32nd date with Dale at the restaurant, <laughs> he's on the phone with Jules asking her which wine to uh, order. Yeah. That's the only time he interacts with those two. Otherwise, he's just being a weirdo and following Dale to all these parties and everything. And it's just... He doesn't need to be in the movie. No. He, we could cut out a lot of time from this movie. Just get <laughs> rid of him. can make it a 90-minute movie. It's a post to two hours, you know? Instead of a two-hour movie. Yeah. He doesn't have to be in. So that's change number one. The characters are super unlikable. So mm. how do we fix that? Let's start with Kevin. He's always going on these rants about how love sucks. That doesn't need to be in it. That's annoying. I want to mention something because right. uh, we reviewed American Pie a couple weeks ago, and you compared Kevin to yeah. Finch, to Finch, the character, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how he's just a weird guy. Do you understand what I'm I, saying? I did. After watching it, I, I see what you mean by it. Because he's, yeah, he's kind of an outcast. Yeah, and, he's and he just, just seems to be smarter than everybody he, yeah, else. Yeah, he's always got a comment kind of to say. He's yeah. always got his comment. <laughs> you know, marriage was invented by people who were lucky to make it to 20 without being eaten by dinosaurs. <laughs> like, just that's such a stupid thing to say. So here's what I think. For Kevin, change the whole love sucks thing to love is complicated. Make him go out on a few dates and strike out. Mm -hmm. And then when he gets together with Leslie and moves way too fast and all this kind of stuff, it's understandable. Yeah. We already have the you background of him. To it. Yes, and he's much more relatable. Yeah. And we already have the background of him going like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Love is so complicated instead of just love sucks, yeah. which is such a stupid thing. Like, we don't feel it's bitter bad and for angry. Him. Like, it right. just doesn't, it's, it's not a good, it's not a positive thing. Absolutely. You would actually feel bad for him if, if that was his angle as opposed to the whole love sucks right. thing, right? So that's how I would change that character. Alec is just, I mean, the guy's <laughs> just a douche. Let's just say, you know, I mean, he's just terrible. So how I would change it is, because it, it, it's sort of implied that he's always kind of cheating on mm -hmm. her and he wants to marry Leslie because he just can't help himself. He's and he's cheat. cheating on her because she won't marry him. Right. And so like that's a bad excuse. That's it's a, a bad excuse. excuse and it just makes him so unlikable. Like, I don't want this guy to win in the end. I don't want him to have a good life. No. Like, he seems like a bad guy. So here's how we change him. We have him cheat on her one time like and have him feel bad about it mm -hmm. so like he goes to a party with his work friends or whatever has too much to drink ends up in the back seat of a car with a girl or whatever feels really bad about it and then he can you know confide in kevin like he does in the movie he can bring leslie these gifts to try to you know overcompensate her back. for it which then makes her suspicious and we still get the scene where she kind of reveals to him that she thinks she's cheating yeah and then we have the you know him confronting kevin about it we have kevin and leslie's night together right it still all works and alec is not an unlikable guy at the end yeah right? i like that i like that so uh and then let's move on to another thing <laughs> i've got more changes you've here. got more and by the way, let us know in the comments section or head to the Giant TV Facebook page. If any of this makes sense, you know, let me know and let me know if you have changes or if you wouldn't change anything. That's we'd love to hear from you. So, Billy. <laughs> Billy the Kid. <laughs> Billy the Kid. Um, here's what I would do. Can uh, I just mention yeah. one thing? His earring. His the dangly earring. earring yeah. that, oh, it's so 80. He it, looks ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. His whole thing is just completely ridiculous. But then again, he's a rock star. Yeah. Billy's He's the frat the, house the boy. Kid. Yeah. And when he goes back to the frat house, they're like, oh, Billy's back. We can't yeah, yeah. Billy's here. All right. He's like a frat house legend. Yeah. And that totally makes sense. He's a ridiculous <laughs> looking person. Um, so here's uh, what I have to say about Billy. Because Billy and Wendy kind of didn't make sense Not to a me. believable couple. couple. No, not a believable couple. And I think one reason is because they are so different. Wendy is clearly got her life together, has moved on from college. She's still living with her parents. She's trying to figure her life out. He is still totally stuck in the whole college zone. And, okay, on one hand, you could say, well, maybe she likes him because he is that kind of wild kind of guy. Maybe she just needs the that in her boy. life. Right? Girls the bad like the boy. bad boy. Sure. And so maybe it's just he's so different that that's the appeal. But why does he have to have a kid and a, and yeah, well, well, yeah. I mean, and a uh, wife? But, I mean, things happen in college, right? right? You know, accidents, you get drunk at a party. And I, yeah. I, I can understand that part of it, but I see where you're coming from as well. So my change is take out 
the wife and kid. I mean, at the end of the movie, he basically just goes, yeah, my wife is getting remarried. Uh, I was thinking about doing the whole weekend father thing, but <laughs> she needs a real father. Yeah. And then he so goes off to gonna, New York. He's going to bail the, on the kid. And Yeah. <laughs> what, what's up with that? So I think it's much more believable if he doesn't have the wife and kid, if he's dating Wendy, but is still the whole womanizing, heavy partying kind of guy, mm -hmm. she finally has enough, says, maybe I will date this guy that my mom wants me to date, Howie. And, uh, but Howie. then we still get the moment on the park bench, the whole, you know, don't give up on me kind of moment, except it's with Wendy yeah. instead of his wife. Okay. And then we still get the uh, Wendy and her dad with the whole, you know, I don't love Howie, I love Billy. And uh, so we, it still works out. And he doesn't have to be a neglectful father. In exactly, the yeah. So anyway. Which makes him less likable again. Right. Yeah. And so, anyway, those are my changes. Okay, well, that's, I like that. That's a, that makes It makes sense when you break it yeah. down like that. And, and we've both watched it, and you've watched it several times, and yeah. it makes perfect sense. So, let's look at where it ranks among other movies that are bad. Right. But we enjoy. <laughs> again, bad being a subjective thing exactly. here. Exactly. We're not but, saying that necessarily yeah. bad, but in our opinions. Movies that have flaws... And uh, there is a common thread between the bad movies that I enjoy, and that is a crazy plot, uh -huh. or at least a crazy plot point. Like in this one, it's the whole Kirby angle is just ridiculous. It doesn't have to be in there, and to me, it just like makes it ridiculous and, and just a crazy, crazy plot point. And so some of the other kind of bad movies that I really enjoy watching are like Con Air. Mm -hmm. Um, or The Rock, which just have ridiculous plot points. Both like, with Nicolas Cage. Yeah, both with <laughs> Nicolas Cage. It's gotta be a Nicolas Cage like, movie. Who gets a bad rap, but a I always bit. He's a great actor. Movies. He is. Great actor, great movies, and but like The Rock. <laughs> These guys take over Alcatraz, Alcatraz yeah. and so they have to send in a chemist and a former prisoner to break in and stop the whole thing. Ridiculous. Yeah. Or else they'll blow up San Francisco. Just absolutely ridiculous. But I love that movie. I've been watching it since I was a kid, yeah, and I'll never stop I remember watching, watching it. it. I've got, I've got yeah. Roadhouse on my list. Roadhouse. With Patrick Swayze, <laughs> a martial arts expert right. who also has a philosophy degree from NYU. Naturally. And, uh, you know, he goes into town to town, yeah. cleaning up all these dive bars. Sure. <laughs> He's trying to make it clear that uh, small towns don't have any law right. whatsoever, <laughs> and it, it's just that that's a ridiculous one too. That, that's that's tops on my list. I it think. is, but it's a it's a good movie. It, yeah, no, it's a great movie. Completely ridiculous. I just love that. This is a thing. Like, bars are scouting bouncers. Yeah. <laughs> and so let's get that guy from... <laughs> this muscly arm, yeah, exactly. long hair guy. He's the best bouncer around, yeah. you know? And it's just, I, I love that they make that a thing. Uh -huh. And yeah, it's ridiculous. Are there any others that you, uh, you've you got there? I think every James Bond movie from the 80s. Okay. Um, really, any James Bond movie ever. Although some of the recent ones... The like newer some ones of the, are pretty entertaining. Yeah, the Daniel Craig ones are actually really well made. But there's a kitschiness to the old James Bond movies mm -hmm. from the 60s, 70s, 80s that I love and they, they get ridiculous but the whole point of james bond is that they're ridiculous but i uh, I, I would throw those in now a movie that you and i have both seen the room yes tommy wiseau tommy wiseau so many questions about that movie <laughs> yeah again not a good movie not a good movie but and, i really liked it right and see, the, the acting is terrible the acting is terrible the filmmaking is brutal <laughs> he shot the movie the with love two scenes cameras. that are like yeah. 15 minutes long yeah like eight minutes into the movie there's a four minute long sex scene yeah four minutes <laughs> it's a long time it's hard to watch there's so many problems with it it's considered the best bad movie of all time and some people would just say no this doesn't fall into the category it's just a bad movie yeah but it's become a cult classic and it's become a cult classic there's people who have seen this movie more than they've seen "Quote unquote good movies," yeah. and uh, I think that's kind of hilarious. And so, do you think this movie falls into this category of of clearly a bad movie, uh -huh. but it's enjoyable to watch and everything, and you really love it? Um, no, it doesn't. The, no, okay. because it, it, it's it's that bad that like people that are going into it watching it thinking yeah. this is like what, what am i getting into they're gonna watch it and they're just gonna hate it whereas see it almost fire <laughs> yeah you could there's part you can enjoy it yeah. that's a movie that you can enjoy whereas the room if you're not if you're not in the mood if you're not if you're, ready if you're, for if you're not it, ready yeah. for it you're <laughs> yeah. gonna be like what the hell am i watching right like, why did i like why did this movie get made this is probably why the room doesn't show up on cable ever <laughs> <laughs> is because if somebody was flipping through the channels and the room was on uh-huh 
that would not go over well. You have to really seek it out. You have to hear from a friend. Oh, this movie's crazy. And well, all you this told kind me about stuff. it. I right. never heard about it until he's like you. Or you said you've got yeah. to watch the room, and I was like, okay, well, <laughs> let, okay, let's watch it. Yeah, and yeah, sure enough. So you don't think it falls into this category, but you do enjoy the room. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I liked it. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I just want to throw that out. I absolutely <laughs> love the room. So let's talk about our favorite scenes in St. Elmo's Fire. Okay. And there's a few that kind of stick out to me. Uh, one of them being Alec kicking Leslie out of their apartment after they have their little confrontation mm-hmm. at the, the party where uh, they kind of split up and uh, they're arguing over their relationship, but they're also arguing the records and in their apartment. And who's going to take what, Who right? takes yeah, what? Yeah, the good dialogue in that scene. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I just love, um, you can have all the Billy Joels yeah. or whatever. <laughs> Springsteen like, is not leaving yeah. his house. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, that's so great. And uh, I just love that. It's supposed to be this, like, heavy moment where, like, she expected that he wasn't going to be home. So she's just going to sneak in, grab her stuff, and leave. But then he's home. Yeah. And so they have this argument, but they're just arguing over the records. It's just so funny and to me. And he's carrying a football through the house. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> he and um, sit across the room. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I love that. Uh, I love that scene a lot. I love the party um, where Wendy brings Billy to meet her family oh, for so the first awkward. time. So awkward. Billy looks ridiculous, as I mentioned yeah. earlier. He's got his one earring and all this kind of stuff, his crazy hair, and all of her family are in suits and like <laughs> dress nicely. And... They all seem to be old. Like yeah. she's the only young person in her entire family, basically. And so it's just such a shock to the system for her whole family to see Billy yeah, there. Yeah, they don't know what to expect. And I love the part where she kind of warns him about her mom. Like whenever she says a word that uh, you know is. Um, kind of taboo or whatever she whispers it like she says cancer and all this kind of stuff (laughs) and she asks billy where did you and wendy meet and he says prison Prison. (laughs) i I just love that part and then of course because of that party at the end they go up on the roof Uh remember billy's up he's having a drink up on the roof he almost falls off the roof almost falls off the roof and so all of her family are just so shocked by this because it's such a huge mansion that leads to my favorite line in, in the entire movie later on where wendy is talking to her dad and she says, I'm in love with Billy. And he says, Billy from the roof? <laughs> yeah, that's all he remembers him as. He doesn't remember from the party, yeah. right? but he's, not, he's the guy yeah. on the roof. Billy yeah. from the roof is is my favorite line of the entire movie. And it's said by Martin Balsam, who's one of my favorite actors ever in so many great movies. I'm just so happy that he's in this movie. And so that's, that's one of my favorite scenes. And then even though I mentioned all the issues we have with Kirby, I think... Um, the party that he throws for Dale at Mr. Kim's house uh-huh. that she doesn't show up to, and then him going up the mountain to that ski resort to uh, to confront her. It's so ridiculous, but I kind of just enjoy watching it. Like, yeah, there's a lot of funny it, moments. It's like, like you bring it back to the car wreck. You can't turn away. Right, right? exactly. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is such a disaster. Like, why is he doing <laughs> why all this? Is he doing this? And, and why is she okay with why it? Why is she okay with it? And there's a lot of funny moments in there. Like, uh, when her boyfriend or whoever, that doctor that she's with, goes to grab the camera. Oh, yeah. And he uh, grabs Big her and kisses kiss, her. Yeah. Which, by the way... We'll get into Is It Woke in just yeah. a few minutes. But he takes the photo of her and then just gives her the photo and drives up. <laughs> he takes a big smile on his yeah, face. Yeah. He's like, like he's completed something, which he really hasn't. He hasn't, no. and it's super weird. Like He's totally <laughs> obsessed. And it's just a strange thing. However... If we take Kirby out of the movie like I wanted to, we don't get that We don't moment. have that part, yeah. So, you know, maybe I wouldn't change as much as I think after all. Out of those scenes, like, do, did you have a favorite one or not? Really? I like the I like the part with the, um, in the apartment when he kicked yeah. her out of the, when, he went, when they were talking about the records. That was probably the one that stood out to me the most. Yeah, that's yeah. my favorite scene, too. Yeah. I, I always love watching that scene. It's really great. Um, how about favorite characters? So characters, um, we've talked about Billy throughout this whole <laughs> podcast. Uh, Rob Lowe with this outrageous party guy. Yeah. Uh, just a mess. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, near the end of the movie, you see a softer side of him when right. um, uh, Jules is having her breakdown in her right. apartment. And he's coming in as the good guy, as her friend and stuff like that. So I like that. And uh, also Ali Sheedy, who played Leslie, she seemed the most grounded out of all of the characters. Yeah. I mean... She was a good girl, and you felt bad for her because she was in the middle of this love triangle. Right. And I just think she was an overall likable character. Absolutely, yeah. We talked about how so many of the characters are unlikable. Um, Leslie and Wendy are really the only two Mm -hmm. in the main cast that aren't despicable, (laughs) just aren't totally unlikable. Jules is understandable. 
She has a lot of issues. She's addicted to drugs. She mentions she has trouble with her parents, her mm. father, her stepmother. She's got money problems. Right. She's yeah. in debt. She lost her job. She had an affair with her boss at one point, all this kind of stuff. It makes sense that she's putting on this front, mm. and the front is just horrible like you know like she's just kind of an awful person but it makes sense and and then we see the moment at the end where she kind of realizes mm -hmm. you know like oh my god <laughs> i gotta get you know, my stuff yeah, together I gotta get my yeah. act together and so so i don't totally dislike that character but yeah most of them are dislikable but yeah i think billy billy is um ridiculous mm -hmm. but i think we know people like that we even know if billy they, yeah even if they didn't get to that extreme we know people who are like oh no College is over. I had the time. What of am my I life. gonna do? What am I gonna do I'll now? I'll just keep partying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah, Billy. Billy's cool. I like Billy. Is it woke? Is it woke? Let's get to this because we both had, uh, we had opinions on this. Yeah. Could this movie be released as it is in 2019? Brandon, I have a question for you. Where are all the people of color? Yes, there's none, <laughs> and there's one. Right. Specifically, and there's, with that, which has any sort of role. Yeah. There's and, one black woman, yeah. Naomi. And she's a sex worker. She is a sex worker. So there's an Asian man, there's Mr. Kim, but it's implied at one point that he is a Korean gangster. Yeah. <laughs> so according to St. Elmo's Fire, if you're a person of color, you're either a sex worker or a gangster. Yeah. That's that's rough that's in the 2019 woke. version. And the fact that Kevin was assumed to be gay just because he wasn't, he didn't have a girlfriend. Right. You know, they just uh, the assumption is there. Yeah. Why? I, and that's another thing, too. If we're talking about um, the differences between now and 1985, you know, I mentioned how, you know, leaving college was different back then than it is now. Mm -hmm. That's another thing now is for the millennial generation, Gen Z, nobody I'm cares assuming. Anymore. Nobody cares. Yeah. And also... A lot of my friends don't have girlfriends. You know, I'm we don't a have guy. girlfriends. We don't have girlfriends. <laughs> it's like it's people don't assume we're gay. Yeah, exactly. You know? And it's just so much more acceptable to be single now, mm -hmm. and people kind of own that. And it's kind of more about like, let me get my life sorted before I figure that part yeah. out. And so that is a big part that's different about now compared to 1985. That she just assumes he's gay. Yeah, because. Well, why don't you have a girlfriend? Why didn't you ever make a pass at me? All that kind of stuff. So that's, yeah, that's one that probably doesn't make it into 2019 version. Kirby. Everything about Kirby. I mean, we've talked <laughs> about Kirby. Stalking Dale. Yeah. yeah. I mean, following her to different two parties. different places, yeah. throwing her, himself at her with the kiss at the end, all that kind of stuff. It's just so weird. And that definitely would not fly, I think, in the 2019 uh, version of this movie. Also... Everything, and I mentioned Martin Balsam, mm -hmm. one of my favorite actors, everything he says in the diner scene with Wendy, he plays Wendy's dad, you know, about, you know, you'll learn to love how, yeah. and, and uh, you can have a job until you're pregnant. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't fly. It, <laughs> it just does doesn't fly. fly today. I mean, yeah, it, it, you're right. It's totally one of those things that um, you look at, and, and if you said that to a woman today... Yeah. Could you, like, it, it's you can't. Just, you're just asking for trouble. <laughs> you're asking for trouble. It would not go over. I mean, granted, so. it's his daughter, but still, I mean. Right. She and probably wouldn't be too happy about it. No, I don't think standards. so. No. no, and she wasn't happy about it then either, but still, like, nowadays, they wouldn't even write that into the movie, no. I think. And so, I don't know. That's kind of an interesting part. So, is it woke? No. No, it's not woke. <laughs> they, they would have to change a lot of things for the 2019 version of this movie. So, that, Brandon, is St. Elmo's Fire. Do you have any kind of last thoughts? on it um no other than the fact that like i said I, I wouldn't watch it again i didn't love it didn't hate it right but it's one of those movies i've watched i'm glad i watched it right um and that's all i can really say about it yeah okay so let's preview next week's show what do we got well we're actually going to be covering our very first tv show that's right on watch this we've done a few movies and we're going to get back to movies but we're going to do a couple of episodes here about downton abbey yes one of your favorite shows one of my favorite shows i've never seen it Right. People would never are, think of watching it. Right. And you are probably the last person in my life I would think would start watching it on your own. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. Absolutely. You're, <laughs> Absolutely you're totally not. spot on. I seem to get a lot of flack for this, especially from guy friends. Mm -hmm. When they find out that I love Downton Abbey, it's always like, <laughs> Well, my what? initial reaction was, what? <laughs> right. It's incredible. Really? <laughs> it's incredible. I love it. Do I think you're going to like it? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Hard to say. Hard to say, but I'm going to make you watch it. <laughs> you throw your pen I'm at me. throw my pen at you. You're I'm going to make you watch it. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I don't know what to expect. I know you've kind of uh, given me uh, the cliffs notes of, of what it's about. 
But what do you know about I, it, if anything? I know that it's about uh, two separate, like the 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 help. I guess that you want right. to call it in the in a in a in a castle, basically, and the. Uh, upper echelon of the castle, okay. I guess. Is that is you got that the basic gist of it? Accurate to say? Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I hope you like that <laughs> because you're going to be watching. We'll be it. watching it, and that is next week on Watch This. We're going to be diving into Downton Abbey. I want to thank our producers Joe and Lucas and Shelby for editing these videos as well. For Eric and Brandon, it's Watch This. Thanks for watching.